My name is Sousan Hader. That's S-A-W-S-A-N. Understandably, my name isn't the easiest to pronounce. It's different, weird, and for as almost as I can remember, I've hated my name. It was constantly followed by, sorry if I butcher this, but it took me a while to realize the inherent power that lies within my name. In southern Ghana, there lives the Ashanti people, and within some of their traditions, it is believed that every Ashanti child is given a spiritual name in accordance with the day of the week on which they were born. So, Ashanti children born on a Monday are referred to as Kwadwo, and those born on a Wednesday are referred to as Kwaku. Those born on a Monday are supposedly destined to live a much more successful and peaceful life, whereas those born only two days later on a Wednesday are expected to be much more troublesome and rebellious. How could the day of the week that we're born on, or a certain combination of letters that we're given, possibly determine the outcomes of our lives? Understandably skeptical, many psychologists decided to create studies in order to quantifiably measure the connection between an Ashanti child's name and their nature. What they found when inspecting judicial court records to see who was getting in trouble with local authorities was that there was a tremendous, uh, tremendously more amount of quakus and a significantly less amount of quadwos. Because of their names, and more importantly, the meaning inherent within their names, it determined their accomplishments and destinies. Ladies and gentlemen, our names are the first labels we're given. They have this overwhelmingly crucial ability to determine um, and develop our sense of self. And whether we see it or not, they have the ability to influence our choice of profession, where we live, whom we marry, the jobs we earn, the grades we get, and whether we're accepted into a particular school or hired for a particular job. And that's both terrifying and very interesting. And so I'll be analyzing the power of names by looking at three key things. Firstly, pronounceability. In 2011, there was a New York University study that concluded the more pronounceable a person's name is, the more likely people are to favor them. Our names differ in a lot of ways, but they differ in the most fundamental way because of their pronounceability. Trust me, I would know. And so in this study, it was concluded whether name pronounceability would influence voting ease in a mock election. And what they found was that when a name is easier to process, when it's easier to comprehend, we come to like it more, and thus, there was continual preference for candidates with easier to pronounce names. Two, appearance. I was having a conversation with my friends a couple weeks ago in which we talked about how some people tend to look like their names. We're constantly told not to judge a book by its cover, but the truth is we all do, and facial appearance matters when we judge people. But what we don't often see is how much of an impact our names have on how we look. This is probably one of my favorite studies of all time. It's called the Dorian Gray Effect. I want you to try and guess the name of this person from nothing more than looking at a picture of his face. Upon looking at the picture and inspecting the four options, participants chose the name Dan 38% of the time. And that's much more than a probability for a random guess. And this choice was correct. Dan is the name of the person in this picture, suggesting that a person's name may be manifested in his or her facial appearance. The reason for this is that our names carry personal significance, thus making them a potential contributor to influencing our behavior, choices, and actions, which as a result, influences our appearance. Sure, that's great, but what does it all mean? Why does it matter that our names can influence our likability or that sometimes we tend to look like our names? The truth is that our names are used to exploit and to take advantage of. And whether we see it or not, they are used to fuel assumptions, stereotypes, and discrimination. A Swedish study compared immigrants who had changed their Asian or African names, such as Abayomi or Mohammed, to more neutral sounding ones, such as Lindbergh and Johnson. And they found that this kind of name change substantially improved earnings with immigrants and their new names earning on average 26% more than their counterparts. Let that sink in. The message that this is sending is that those with white names are worth on average 26% more. And that's terrifying. Candidates with white names received 50% more callbacks and on average their resumes had an equivalent of eight more years in work experience compared to an identical ethnically, ethnically named one. And it doesn't just start at the workplace. The ever-lingering influence of names can even begin as children. 
children with low socioeconomic standings or names that sound black are often met with lower teacher expectations and thus perform more poorly on tests. Regardless if this data about names and labels works in your favor or not, there are exceptions, outliers, phenomena. When met with a label, we're also met with a choice. We can either let this label define us, as it has done for so long, or we can be these exceptions, outliers, phenomena. Simple words that we use to categorize human beings can lose their power, and that choice lies with you. Thank you. <laughs>